love is looking the most precious. You weren't with us all the time. That, that kind of helps. Yeah. So you need a, you need a body to look Have you seen his shoes, by the way? Yeah. Whoa. I'm Trevor Dickinson, and I have to admit straight away, I am an amigaholic, so I apologize. Um, I'm pleased to see people like David Pleasance and uh, RJ McCall here today with grey hair, because when I got my first amiga, I had black hair, so as someone reminded me. So it's nice to see some people growing old, because everyone here looks quite young compared to me. Uh, so great. So here, we're here really to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Amiga computer, that's why we're here. That's where we come together to celebrate. And looking around the room, I see younger people. So I'm thinking maybe in 30 years' time, there'll still be Amigas around running Amigas of some sort of other. So that's really good news. So uh, if I start off with a very short presentation, if I find where I put that controller. Okay. Right, why are we here today? We're here to celebrate the Amiga. It's 30th anniversary. No, it's the anniversary of the same in the corner because it's cut off. Okay. And we're here to celebrate you know, the, the computer that was launched uh, in 1985, the Lincoln Center in New York City, with such pomp and flair. We had the king of American pop art. We had the top female singer from the band Bonding. I love Bonding. Um, and the meeting was launched in the world. What did it do? It had groundbreaking design that changed the face of the computer. A custom ship set that freed up the CPU. Uh, it had a preemptive multi tasking operating, operating system that for many years was still much better than anything was out there. And a very small uh, footprint. And an elegantly simple GUI, which I still think is one of the best GUIs out there. And it introduced the world to multimedia concept. And today, all modern computers are really based on that same philosophy, if not the same hardware. Now we know as the Beavers, uh, after the death of Commodore, and we've got uh, ex-Commodore, uh, uh, joint managing director of Commodore UK here, and tell us more about that book. After the death of Commodore, the media went through a number of transitions, and I could have put a 30 or 40 more companies on this list of software, but I mean, just to, to name a few ones, uh, obviously uh, Amiga Technologies, and Pe Petros here, so he tells about that. Uh, Gateway, the Gateway years, oh dear. Uh, powered by Amiga, another one, uh, one that Petro was involved in. Uh, the rise of Eros, an Amiga replacement operating system, as it was originally called. Um, emulation with Amiga Forever, we've had Michael here today talking about emulation. It started way back in 97, I think, could be wrong. Uh, we had next generation operating systems coming out. And these were going to be the new power PC operating systems that would drive the Amigas of the future. And so we had Morph OS, one of the first one to, to take up the challenge. Um, this was followed by Gateway not building the computer they're going to build and shutting out of business and selling it to uh, uh, Bill McEwen and Felicity Moss. Then we had Amino, which became Amigo Inc. Um, you want to say more about that? Um, we have Hyperion, uh, iTech, and Amiga OS. Um, and we all know what happened after that. We all know about court cases and everything else. But I think it's really interesting to just say that it's amazing that after all that trial and tribulation since the death of Commodore, that we're all still here today celebrating the 30th anniversary of Amiga. It's pretty amazing, really. So, what am I doing here? Um, I got my first, actually, all the most use, I got my first computer, it was a Commodore PET 4032. I was going to build a ZX80, but I decided the Commodore PET was better. Just a little bit. And I didn't 
chips in apple. I could have chosen an apple, but I'm going to Congo pet. So then I went Congo 64 after seeing international soccer playing in a computer store. I sat at it. So unfortunately, in those days, I couldn't afford to keep a pet and the 64, so I traded my, my pet. I got uh, Congo 64. Congo 128, Congo 128D. You see a trend here? Uh, <laughs> And then I moved to the States and uh, I was working in, in Texas and my, um, my 128 got blown up and uh, power slugs through a thunderstorm and on my insurance certificate it said Acts of God. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Act of God. So I bought Amiga 2000 and that's how I got into Amiga. So in 1988 I bought my first Amiga to Amiga 2000. Then a 3000, then a 4000, a 4000 tower. And I wanted a bigger 5,000. But it's a black bear now, so you know. Uh -huh. um, so, one who, I formed a company, I jointly founded a company called AI Technology, and uh, we are just an eager enthusiast. My, my co founder, Matthew Lehman, uh, started, cut his teeth on an eager 1200, he's a lot younger than me. Um, and so, we have a, a grounding in Amiga computers, in Commodore computers. Uh, our first product was the Amiga 1X1000, which was released last year. Our first product was the X1000. And we are interested in all forms of Amiga and any form that Amiga takes. I'm not one for all this fighting and bitching and moaning about this, that, and the other. We're a small enough group of people, we should all work together to the benefit of, of the community that still exists. And let's grow the community, because I want to be like a bit around the 30 years time. I won't be, but I hope the community is. So, we released the, uh, the X1000, uh, or we launched it at the Vintage Computer Festival in 2010. Uh, these are the Freedom Twins, they're, uh, they're contract developers who work for Hyperion Entertainment. And, uh, I think one of them might be on the show today, but I don't see him around yet. And so, this was launched VCF. It was hanging together with chicken gum and string. 24 hours before the show, it wasn't working. So I turned up the show thinking that, oh my goodness, spent all this money, all this stuff, people are coming to the show and it's not going to work. And just, these things happen about 8 o'clock the night before the door to boot to workbench. They got on the, uh, on the channel tunnel, Eurostar, came to the UK, bought their board, put it into a case that we had ready for them, put it up, and it just about worked. <laughs> so it was, it's very buggy, but you know, over that next six months to a year, it we improved. The video test boards were actually released in the summer of 2011, and by the end of 2011, we had the first contact systems for ship. And, uh, We've had very few returns in terms of repairs. It's, been, it's proved a very reliable piece of hardware. And uh, the software has improved, the drives have improved over the, over the time. So there's um, an Amiga 1X1000 uh, running Amiga OS 4.1. Uh, unlike running uh, Amiga OS on the emulation, sorry, Michael, it's not the same. But, but whether it's classic Amiga or next gen Amiga, it doesn't feel like Amiga, it feels like you're running on. Running on the real hardware, to me, is the only way to go. Um, apart from running on OS, OS 4.1, up to 5 edition now, it, it, sort, it supports about 15 power PC Linux distributions. Uh, we have a, a Ubuntu Live Remix DVD, so you just put, put the CD in the drive and run, uh, run Linux from the DVD. It works very well. Um, in 2012, we did a proof of concept design with um, uh, our developers, our hardware developers, and that's uh, the word virus system and ultra viruses. Um, the Amiga 1X1000 was built on the PSME CPUs. Apple bought PSME, shut down the production line, and you know, the rest. Uh, so this time we decided we wanted to select a, a, a power PC CPU manufacturer that had a long um, long-term plan for supporting their products. Uh, so we chose Freestyle, and we designed this uh, little board as a, as a test to see whether or not we could produce a good uh, power PC run board for the Amiga, for the Amiga OS. Primarily the Amiga OS because that was our market. Um, in 
2012, the show then, 2013, 2013, we signed up uh, uh, for the media community, for a modern media community, a massive 1.2 uh, million dollar development and hardware development program with ultraviruses. Uh, to design three new meets based on the uh, free scale core IQ. I should say legal ones, we have a very careful licensing. The license would be legal one, not the legal one. The legal one, you can't kind of use the legal name for the computer, so it's all going crazy. Or part of this mismatch of what happened after the, the death of Cornwall. Uh, so uh, we were planning uh, three models. Uh, one based on the P3041, quad core 32 bit. One based on the P5020, uh, 2 GHz, uh, 64 bit, dual core. And a third based on a P5040, uh, 2.4 GHz at the time, uh, 64 bit quad core. Uh, Free scale since brought out uh, the, the uh, 5040 as a, a quad core. 2.2 GHz. Uh, we launched the, the Cirrus Plus, that's what the board's called, the 5020 board, Cirrus Plus. Uh, uh, they were shipped to uh, BT testers in 2014. You'll see one operating in the back there, Dennis is one of the BT testers. He's had the board for how long, Dennis? Four, four months? Yeah. So, um, we're planning at the moment to launch the first contact systems, which will keep with the space theme we call it Close Encounters. Uh, close Encounters, we're planning to launch that in September. So, the first commercial systems. Again, and it's the first commercial systems that will come with uh, uh, a minimum fire uh, operating system that goes with. This is a legal one, X1000, called Designated 20, because it's 5020, and it's running a bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit The Morphos developers are also uh, working with the Cyrus boards, and they've uh, recently, a German show, showed uh, a very early beta version running Morphos uh, on the 5020, uh, so on the Cyrus Plus. So we're, we're very, very uh, happy that we're giving it. And I'd like to see Airbus running on the hardware as well. I'd like to see every operating system that's legal running on the hardware we produce. Then they can choose what they want. Uh, we've already got a fairly stable power of PC Linux distribution running on the uh, Cyrus Plus. And we received a uh, 5050 prototype in the first quarter this year. So now we have a 5040 as well. That's 2.2 gigahertz quad core. Um, all this you know, dual core quad core is great. But we need a bigger, bigger OS, bigger OS, uh, more for OS supported. Fortunately, the Linux supports already. So you want to play the Linux and see all these cores running and see the traces and break you can do. But uh, it wouldn't, they wouldn't need to be on our operating systems and on our support. We got the first production boards in for the, uh, they are not their production boards, uh, for um, the uh, 5020 and Cyrus Plus, and they're the ones that will start the ship in, uh, in September. So what are we doing now? Uh, over the last 12 months, we believe that for the Amiga OS, of OS, AOS that we have at the moment, we need more content. I said that at AmiOS last year, they once saw my AmiOS talk, we need more software content. We need to encourage more developers to create more content and content for our hardware. So for the last five months, we've been acquiring classic Amiga titles uh, to redevelop them, like the source code, like uh, Personal Paint from uh, Michael and Brian. Uh, and we've already released uh, a new version for Classic and for Amiga OS 4. Uh, Image FX, one of my favorites on the Amiga Classic. Uh, Aladdin 4D, my more recently Optimate, TuneNet, DV Player, and uh, Ringio. And expect more. This is not the end. Uh, we're, we're developing new software utilities for our hardware, multi-view, workbench handy, walk 3D, various other uh, uh, software utilities and titles. We are trying to make sure that anything we do can be backported to some extent to the classic. And uh, we'd 
like to see them running on on the other uh, and the like operating systems as well. We've been sponsoring major software porting projects, none of them come to fruition yet, but we'll continue to do that. And we will we'll continue to support MegaOS and all the MegaOS inspired software developers. It's important for, our, for the future of the Vega if you want to see the Vega continue. Uh, we released, um, I think we released an app store, he's the developer of it. It's an app store that actually runs on your vehicle. Uh, there is actually a classic version which he hasn't released yet, but it runs on the moment on the OS 4 and on the classic. We'd like to see it on the more for OS and the Air Ross 4. A few little secrets, I'm not going to tell you much secrets today. Uh, we cancelled the uh, Silas. Plus a project based on the 3401. We couldn't find a price differential between the 3401 and the, and the 5020. It didn't make much sense. Uh, so instead, we uh, replaced that with two new contracts with viruses for two new products. That's what they say this morning. Um, we're, we're working on more projects in software and utilities and games. And next generation bigger OS and the OS operating systems. So that's what we focus on first. And we want to see multi-operating systems support, and that's what we're working with tools. But the reason we're here really is the Amiga. So I want to say happy birthday, Amiga. 30 years old next month. Next month? This month, next month. Um, here's to the next 30 years. I hope you, most of you are here to see it. Thank you very much.
Okay, next up is Mr. David Pleasance. The clue is in the name.